Hi, my name is Lingus from Medical Channel Asia. Today I'll be your host, and we're joined by a very special guest, Dr. Eugene Yu, who's a colorectal surgeon. Today we'll be exploring a very special topic known as bowel obstruction. And doctor, can you talk about the different causes of bowel obstruction? Right, so to understand bowel obstruction or intestinal obstruction, we have to understand the intestine or the bowel as an organ. And essentially what the uh, intestinal tract is, it's a long muscular tube that starts from the mouth and goes all the way down to the anus. And of course, it's all compacted mainly into the abdominal area. And because the intestinal tract is one long muscular tube, you can't just rely on gravity to push everything down. Uh, basically what it means is that uh, the muscle needs to contract to slowly push the, the, the contents of it down all the way um, as we digest and absorb and pass uh, all the, the, the contents out. Um, so intestinal obstruction or blockage in this uh, system can be because of either something within the tube itself, um, like a stone or maybe a, a big bunch of food. Um, it could be uh, from the wall, for example, a tumour growing in the wall of the intestinal tract or it could be something from the external compressing uh, this muscular tube, for example, a tumour from outside passing, or perhaps a twist in the tract itself. Um, another possible reason for obstruction is not a mechanical one, like a blockage, but it's more of a functional one, where the intestine is paralysed because of medications, post-op, um, and various other factors. So those are the main causes of intestinal or bowel obstruction. Thank you, Doctor. Now, we can understand that there are a number of different causes for bowel obstruction. Now, Doctor, can you talk about specific causes that require surgical intervention that actually leads to bowel obstruction? The good news is that most common cause of intestinal obstruction, which is intestinal adhesions, usually from surgery, uh, tends not to require surgery and relieves itself on its own. Um, however, other causes would generally need a surgery uh, because an uh, obstructed system is generally not compatible with life as we know it. Um, common causes include uh, foreign bodies um, in, in the abdomen stuck somewhere, or a tumour from the wall of the intestine uh, causing an obstruction, or finally a hernia, which is uh, essentially a weakness of the abdominal where the intestines protrude out and they cause an obstruction. So these are generally the causes that require surgery. Dr. Yu, in your practice, you see many, many patients, right? Then how do you determine if a patient requires surgical intervention or bowel obstructive surgery? Um, so the criteria, or rather what we look at to decide whether patients need surgery or not will be basically two different criteria. The first is, is the obstruction going to resolve on its own? If it's not, then the patient is likely to require surgery. Second is that whether this obstruction has caused any damage or any um, problem with the intestines that uh, is involved. If sometimes, even though the obstruction may resolve on its own, for example, in adhesive uh, uh, obstruction, but the intestines, intestines are unhealthy uh, because of the long-standing obstruction causing insufficient blood supply or the intestine to start to burst, then we may require surgery as well. Now, Doctor, to our viewers who are more concerned about surgery, right? Can you talk about the different surgical techniques that are used for bowel obstruction? Um, well, generally, as with uh, abdominal surgery, um, we can approach it using either an open approach, which is a traditional approach, or a minimally invasive approach, which is keyhole surgery. Um, keyhole surgery can be very challenging in the patients that are very ob obstructed for a long time, with very distended abdomens, but sometimes in the early stages, we can still get away with it. And of course, if we manage to do it with a keyhole operation, the patients tend to recover faster, there's less pain, they can discharge quicker as well. Now, doctor, when patients think about surgery, right, immediately they think risks and complications. Now, are there any risks and complications associated with this surgery? Uh, bowel obstruction surgery is um, considered generally a more risky operation than if you do it electively where the patient is prepared. Um, the two general big uh, categories of risk I can divide into either the risk of anesthesia or the risk of surgery itself. Um, anesthesia, the main risk of that, especially in bowel obstruction, is when uh, intubation happens. If patients have very distended abdomen with a lot of food particles, the patients can vomit it out and that can cause uh, the food particles to go into the lungs. It's called aspiration and it can be very dangerous. So we need an anesthetist and even uh, us as doctors to try to actively prevent this um, during surgery and even before surgery. Um, as for the surgical risk, um, the risk would include things like bleeding and infection, which are standard risks for every operation. But specific for intestinal obstruction is that sometimes um, if the bowel is not healthy or if it is a very severe infection, 
Sometimes the bowel may not be able to be joined back together or the bowel may need to be removed. Um, sometimes because the bowel is unhealthy, we may need to bring it out as a stoma, which may be temporary or permanent depending on the patient's um, uh, condition. But uh, essentially, the faster you come to see a doctor, um, the less likely you will get to that stage. So the earlier you see a doctor, um, the better it is for you. Thank you for that, doctor. Now, let's talk about recovery period. Now, it really depends on the stage that you are and also the different types of techniques that are being used. Now, Dr. Yu, in your experience, Fred, how long would you say a typical recovery period lasts? Uh, okay, again, like you rightly mentioned, that really depends on what kind of surgery was done, um, at what stage of the obstruction that the patient presented with. Um, in, the, um, in a very good scenario, if the patient presented with very early and we did it using keyhole, they could go home on the same day or in two or three days. But of course, if the patient uh, has presented with very advanced obstruction and we needed to do a major surgery if open, it may even be in hospital for up to two weeks or so. Now doctor, what are some post-operative care and dietary recommendations that are typically given to patients after surgery? Um, so again, this will depend on the type of surgery that is done. Keyhole surgery generally has very minimal wound care because the wounds are really very small. Um, but of course, if it's open surgery, there is that element of uh, dressing the wounds and taking care of the wound and making perhaps removing the stitches subsequently. Um, in terms of dietary requirements, most of the time there's nothing special in the long term. Uh, but in the short term, we tend to ask the patients to avoid fibre. Um, because fibre can actually cause a blockage if taken in too large proportions. Otherwise, uh, nothing special in terms of uh, dietary requirement. Thank you for that, Doctor. Now, some patients are even concerned about long-term lifestyle modification or even like frequent follow-up procedures. Are there any uh, required for this type of surgery? Um, again, it depends on the condition in which um, the uh, surgery was done and what it was for. Um, for example, certain procedures um, were, that were done to deal with the obstruction may not deal with the main problem. As an example, if I would give an example of a gallstone that has dropped out of the gallbladder that has caused an obstruction in the small intestine, a surgery may have been needed at that point to remove the gallstone from the small intestine, but eventually the patient will need the gallbladder to be removed because if not, another stone could form and, and drop in and cause the obstruction again. Similarly, if the obstruction was done or the surgery was done for cancer, then obviously the treatment for the cancer will be required and not just the relief of the obstruction because uh, in the long term, if the cancer is not treated, um, the patient would have a recurrence. So those are the scenarios where we have follow-up procedures. But um, in terms of the obstruction itself, generally, once you solve it, uh, that's it. So Dr. Yeo, in your years of experience, right, can you talk about the success rates and outcomes of a bowel obstructive surgery? Uh, generally, the success rate would depend on how early the patient comes to see us. Um, as previously discussed, um, the earlier we catch the problem, generally we are able to deal with it with much less risk um, for the patient and also much less risk of doing a more major procedure. Uh, we, if uh, patients come early, we tend to be able to do it in keyhole and uh, if we do it with the keyhole procedure, they also tend to recover much faster. So that actually, um, all things considered, is probably the biggest uh, determinant as to the outcome of a bowel obstruction operation. Now, from a patient's perspective, are there any specific signs and symptoms that a patient can look out for after a surgery like this that could indicate a rise of a complication? Uh, Yes, of course, um, as with every surgery, there's always risk of complications. The general ones we look out for would include uh, bleeding, uh, either internal or external from the wound, infections which would may lead to pass or discharge coming from the wound. The wound may open up uh, if the patients uh, exert themselves too much after the procedure. And of course, general signs like fever, abdominal pain, or even reoccurrence of the obstruction. Um, of course, depending on the primary uh, pathology or the problem that we operated on. So those are generally the things we look out for. But of course, um, in, the, in the initial post-op period, we tend to be a lot more uh, careful and we tend to see the patients much closer even if we've discharged them already. Um, and as the time goes by, we, we are quite sure that there's less and less likelihood of the problems, we would tend to see them uh, in a longer time interval. Thank you, Dr. Eugene Yeo, for sharing your insights and exploring the topic of bowel obstructive surgery. Now, if you enjoy videos just like this, subscribe to Medical Channel Asia. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye! Bye.